Hey guys, this video analysis is for Vitamin K on Reddit. He's the dude in the purple rash guard over here, and he's going up against his opponent in white. And this match is kind of interesting because his opponent is missing part of his right leg. And you'll see how it leads to uh, certain dynamics that play out. So let's get started. So right here in the beginning of the match, his opponent is able to get the takedown. I've never uh, had a match against an opponent who's missing part of his leg, but it definitely leads to some interesting things. One is you pretty much have to know that if they're going to be trying to take you down, it'll most likely be with low singles, something like that. So I don't see exactly how the match started, but for you, definitely you want much lower posture. Like I would be playing with my hands on the mat, like one hand on the mat, potentially even. Because you know he's going to try to shoot at your legs. Starting strategy would probably, probably be to get some sort of snap down. Trying to spin around behind him. Something along those lines. Now from here, yeah, it looks like you somewhat concede the uh, the takedown. Once the guy's on your legs, you can't, you can't pull guard. Otherwise, you'll have points scored against you. And it looks like, yeah, you go for a guillotine or something. I, I'd much prefer to, to try to fight off the takedown fully. And then once my legs are cleared, then you can jump to a guillotine or pull guard, things like that. But this is just a dangerous scenario. I'm not a fan of trying to attack while you're caught in a takedown. Unless, like, you really feel it's your only option and you'll be taken down no matter what. It's so right here you're trying to do kind of like a butterfly hook lift and then your hook comes off like this is part of the the uniqueness of this match is yeah so you have an overhook you try to hook with the butterfly hook and i'm not entirely sure why his light comes out or, or what you're doing but one thing the butterfly hook oftentimes i like to play it right in the crook of the hip so I know some people talk about playing it at the knee, so you have a longer lever, but I am a fan of playing it like right in the hook, uh, crook of the hip. So potentially if you focused on that, you would have stayed stuck to his his hips and he wouldn't have been able to, to clear his leg off. One other thing is I can't see what you're doing in this video with your right hand, but this is really important, especially once you decide to overhook. Because once you're overhooking, you're not going to have any distance control, at least with this arm. And your other option is to like frame against his neck, more or less. With my right hand, I'd be looking to try to grab his wrist uh, and stuff it in, in towards his body if you're going for the, the hook sweep like you are. But right here, his leg goes down. You can tell with his hand, he's trying to push your knee down. At this point, if you don't already have the wrist, which I don't think you had, I would grab his wrist and hold it. Because once he pushes your knee down and gets his leg over, his next uh, order of business is will be to try to wrap around your head. And if you have his wrist secured, he can't do that. He's kind of stuck, and then you can recover your guard again. Once he clears your hook, so once you're no longer hooking, I would immediately let go of this overhook. I'd throw him against the neck. Because, again, you, you need distance at this point. See, he comes in tight. Yeah, you're still hugging around his head, that arm, and then he comes in for the for the cross face. At this point, you're you're in a bad spot. I wouldn't be focused. See, you're focused on pushing the hip. This is a lost battle. Like that's not really going to give you anything. It's about repositioning your arms, especially this far arm. Yeah. See, it looks. I'm not sure what happened there, but it looks like potentially your hand went down to try like stuff his leg. In between, and then maybe you realize, like, okay, there's there's nothing there to stuff. Yeah, his head is tight, so he's doing a good job. You gotta watch out for that arm movement that you did. So right here, see how you lifted your arm up, opening up all this space? Your opponent had a really good reaction. He slides his knee. Boom, trying to cover that space. You get your elbow down, but that was, that was a dangerous move. I definitely wouldn't advise you to do that. Okay, so here's second side control again. Yeah, your arm is doing a lot of things here, but the focus should be on the forearm. Potentially bumping if you feel his head's way too tight, but you got to frame with that left arm. 
You want to get that frame tight, so th sorry, not tight, but you want to create distance with that frame and the bone of your humerus so he can't just be holding you down with a cross face. Yeah, your arm is still over top of his head. That, that's probably like the biggest thing that I would advise you from here. There, it looks like you try to get it in momentarily. <laughs> yeah, the other issue is, see how you're trying to turn towards your left. That's, that's a good avenue of escape. But because of that arm, when your arm is stuck on the outside of his body, no matter how much you turn, eventually your shoulder runs into his shoulder. And if he pins your shoulder down, you can't keep turning towards the inside. And then, I mean, secondarily here, he's going to try to attack that arm now. Yeah, he steps over, goes, like, head down to the mat. I think this is a really poor attack choice on his part. You're able to get out. Yeah, I mean, I'd much, much rather try to step around the head for a mountain bar, if anything. Probably do it tight, maybe get a Kimura grip along the way. He decides to go forward. You kind of push him over and try to get your guard back. And then, yeah, so you, you're not able to get half guard. His leg is free and he's inside. And he kind of tries to step over the mount. Okay. So, let's get back to here. When you push him over, it's hard to tell, but it looks like you also have the chance of just getting him to your feet. Uh, actually, sorry, never mind. Because if he has your left arm under control, then you can't post with your left arm. So, maybe you can't. Okay, you're there, because it looks like you sneak this knee in. Yeah, part of it is... I don't know why, but you like kick your, you extend your legs out briefly. I'll show you one, like right there. Yeah, and then you're bridging, or sorry, you're, then you're posting on them, potentially trying to bridge. Once you have any amount of space created, like here, I would go into a mode of, assuming I'm not trying to get up, of just like sucking my knees in as tight to my chest as possible and trying to land your feet on his body. That's how you should be recovering your guard. Yeah, you, it looks like your arm is a little bit out of position too with uh like this arm if you were to frame it against his body maybe around his ribs here that should give you enough space and time to allow you to really like pull your legs in and recover your guard and s yeah so here he lands on top here you start trying to turn it into him and like this is what, what i would do both his arms are on the far side he has no control over your head he can't stop you from from rotating in towards him so I potentially bridge and then start to switch my feet and turn in towards them. Uh, you got you have to be careful because you're somewhat exposing your back. But as long as you, your turtle game is tight, uh, the good thing with it is it forces motion, so he can't just pin you down inside. He tries to come over in a mount. Yeah, it looks, looks like you're trying to trap him like quarter guard, but again, he's missing part of his leg, so can't really do that. Although you do you do have his leg stuck, you're pinching with your knees. That that's pretty good like improv. It's impressive. And then boom, you're able to roll him over. Again, he doesn't have that leg to post that with. Because normally I feel if you did that kind of pressure, like his foot, even though you may have his foot trapped in between your legs, you can still post his foot out somewhere here. But he can, and I guess his right arm must be occupied somehow, because he doesn't put his, post his arm out. It looks like he has his, it's hard to sort of tell, but it looks like he has his arms, like, with an RNC grip around your neck or something. I'm not sure. Okay, so from here you opt to fall for a leg lock. I'm not sure the reasoning of this. It looks like you still have a lot of time in the match, and... Like, especially if someone's missing part of their leg, like, no offense to them, but I, I would assume that in most cases their guard is easier to pass, so I would definitely try to go for the guard pass. At least give yourself some time, because, like, you, you, you fall into it right away. You could always fall back into leg locks when you're passing the guard, but I, I would give yourself just, just a few chances, a few attempts at, at passing. It's much better than, like, getting stuck in a leg lock battle, because although you can be very good at leg locks, there's always a chance that your opponent is going to attack your legs as well. Once you get down in a position like side or mount or back, it's a it's a very lopsided battle. As you come around, throw your leg across, so, yeah, 
I'm assuming reaping's allowed. Try to go for a heel hook. Yeah, you, your knee is very open. When you heel hook... Yeah, I'd be... I'd much rather have my... Ideally, your leg will weave under his far leg, but again, uh, that probably won't be as secure on him. But I don't like the fact that you're opening this knee out real wide. I would still want the legs pinching in tighter. Yeah, from here, if it's not working, yeah, you fall up to the toe hold, which is nice. Here you can see he's, he's, he's able to sort of keep his leg extended. I assume you're trying to bend it in towards his butt. Yeah, once, if you can't get a bend in the foot, like, I would potentially try to maybe, like, roll with it. See if that allows you to get a better bend in his leg. Yeah, I can't tell what he's doing to you. It looks like maybe a straight full lock, but the quality of this video is, is a little fuzzy. Okay, so there you grab his opposite leg. Not sure what you're trying to do. If you're trying to, like, put into a reverse heel hook. Sorry, wait, you can't have grabbed his opposite leg. What's going on? Oh, no, sorry, you passed the, that leg across. <laughs> yeah, I just, I can't tell what's going on here. Looks like he's trying to extend on a straight foot lock. And then, I think the finish was a heel hook, a reverse heel hook, based on the way his body's moving. One other piece of advice I would say, uh, although you're, you're committed to this leg lock battle, if ever you want to just get out of it, if you switch onto your other hip, so whatever your right leg is doing, if you just kind of like kick it free to the outside, turn over onto your right hip, and then you can stand up and put weight on your left leg, that, that'll clear a lot of, especially like straight foot locks. If he's trying to toe hold you and stuff, you might still have to roll out of it, but... Yeah, it looks like it's a reverse heel hook that gets you. Again, I can't really tell. The video is a little bit fuzzy. But I hope some of that stuff helped.